Um, go further. I mean, I hope that answers the question, but <clears throat> the li life on one hand, it's a big, it's an internal battle of what choices we make in life if to accept the challenge or not to accept the challenge. But the challenge is there all the time, you know, to choose, you know, how to act, how to react. You know, should we get mad? I told you the story and I'll tell it again, but it's, it's a very, I think, very good story. A friend of my wife's, her grandchildren were playing in the house. One was like three or five and they were fighting over a bicycle. And the one that was five took the bicycle from the one that was three. And the one that was three screamed at his brother, you took the bicycle, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you back, you'll see, you're going to regret it. So his grandmother said to him, you're not allowed to t talk about revenge, you're not allowed to take revenge. He says, why not? Three-year-old child says, because it says in the Torah, you're not supposed to take revenge. So he said, oh. but he took my bicycle. He says, okay, but you're not supposed to take revenge, you know, you, you, you come to me and I'll decide who the bicycle, but you're not allowed to get mad and take revenge. He said, okay. He went, walked away. Ten minutes later, he came back to his grandmother and he said, the Torah is really hard, isn't it? The Torah is really hard. In other words, he had to fight this inside battle. You know, he really, my brother did this terrible thing, but he has to think, no, the Torah says not. But he did the thing to me. He took my, no, no, but I, I'm not. My grandma says, that's what the Torah says. But it's my poison. So he has to fight this inside battle <laughs> with himself all the time. Okay, my friends, let's learn the Sikha. Come on. I have, I have a question. Please. What is with this with this one part in the Amida? Do you say uh, away with the? With, uh, there's one part in the Amida who is a new part, uh, yeah. and there, um, and there you say your um, your enemies have to be uh, go away Wait, and no, so. Right, right. You, know, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. So if you look in the in in chapter thirty two of the Tanya near the end of the Tanya, near the end of chapter thirty two. So it says, that what King David said, that I hated them. It says, that's talking about the people who uh, are really, uh, they know the whole Torah, the meaning of Apikorsim. It says, they haven't got a chilek. Okay, so these people that really know the Torah and they're really, they know Kabbalah and they really make a, a war against Hashem. It says, those, that's the ones that's referring to in the, in the davening. The Koresim, that they should be cut off. Talking about these people who are totally in, impossible to be fixed up. This, this was originally made, this prayer was originally made, I think they say, by Shimon Gamlio against the, the, uh, the missionaries that were then, because these were people who knew the Torah, but they were really making inroads into. So, I, you know, I don't know how to, exactly how to judge these people. For instance, they say that the Rebbe Rashab said that. Um, that even even the you know Yashkala, you know, the the which one do he's gonna to go to heaven. Eventually he'll get purified and whatever in hell, he's burning in hell, but he'll go to heaven. And he said, but a, a, a masculine, a teacher that teaches takes children away from Judaism in the time of the Rebbe Rashad, especially, there were a lot of Jews <clears throat> that knew Judaism and they disguised themselves as religious Jews and they got themselves into religious Jewish communities and they became teachers for children, they taught the children to hate the Torah, to hate God, and to leave them. And they took them to, they said, we'll take you to a big school in Germany, and then you'll get, you know, real yeshiva. And they took them away from Judaism. And the Rebbe Rashab said that those people will not raise up in the dead. So those people are, you know, tachlis asinus and asim, ultimate hatred, I hate them. Okay, so, you know, I don't know. You know, th this is not the way of Chabad, definitely, but you're right, there, there definitely is the prayer. So it says that in this prayer we say, uh, let's see, what does it say? We're supposed to make a little break over here. La Malshini Malti Zikba, it says, Umalchos Arisha, the evil kingships, Mehera Te'akir, Utishaber, Utamagir, and then you're supposed to make a break. And it says, Vetachnia. Vetachnia. The word Tachnia means to transform to transform, to subjugate, to make, how do you say, to, to, to calm them down. So not necessarily to be totally destroyed, but to calm them down. And in, in Aleinu, we say every day, Yifnu Elecha Kol Rish Eorz, that will turn to you, God, all of the evil people mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Right? So that means, seems to indicate that all the evil people in the world will somehow or other do tshuva. 
the tshuva. So exactly how does it how does it work? I don't know. I mean, there are definitely people, non-Jews, that they really want to destroy the Jewish people from pure evil, just pure evil. They just hate God and they hate the Jews. And these people have no no hope. These people have no hope. And those ones that says the shilti, the yotikva, there shouldn't be any hope for these people. Those people. But everybody else, which nowadays seems to be almost everyone, is um, there's hope for them. They'll do the seven Noahide commandments. The, Re- the Rebbe never talked about the Goyim being destroyed or the, you know, that God is going to show them. And the... So you're asking a good question, and I don't really know the answer. But all I can say is that what the Rebbe always taught is that eventually everyone is going to do tshuva. Everyone. And that everyone will turn to God. That's what we say. Yakiru v'yiru kol yoshvei tevel. We say it in Aleinu. Everyone in the world will recognize you, God, and everyone will turn to you. And so how it's going to be? I mean, it'll be a very amazing thing, but it certainly is going to be. I don't think it's going to really be that hard because most of the non-Jews in the world, the problem is, is the, their leaders. They have terrible leaders. And I think the problem with the Jews is that everyone of the Jews thinks that they are leaders. They, they, they don't, won't listen to anybody else. So, we'll see. We'll live and we'll see. But meanwhile, let's take it from the Rebbe's point of view. We have to do as much good as we can, and we'll see how to do it in the end. The previous Rebbe showed us, because the, the previous Rebbe had enemies that were really enemies. I mean, these people, they were Jews, and they, a lot of them really knew the Torah, and a lot of them had been in Chabad even, been brought up in Chabad. And they became like murderers, just the worst you know, the lowest. Then there's some people by taking out the good from them that that's what destroys them. It says the Russia, it says you take the shin, which is a good letter out of Russia, it's only left Ra and it can't. Now I've got to face out. So, how it's going to be, I don't know, but what we have to do is the utmost as we can. Let's go back to the Sikha of the Rebbe about the fathers and the mothers. I hope that answered the question. Did it answer? Because it's not really such a clear answer. Yes, thank you. All right. And so what do we say? That, that Balak looked at the Jewish people and he saw the fathers and the mothers. He saw that the Jewish people were connected to the fa- oh, here is the fathers and the mothers. He saw them from the mountains, that's the fathers, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and from the hills, that's the, the mothers. Says the Rebbe, what's this got to do with us? And each and every Jew, we have the fathers and the mothers. What's the fathers? That's Chachma. What's the mother? That's Bina. Chachma is the aspect of a Jew that's totally connected to Hashem. Nothing in the world can affect him. But on the other hand, he can't also affect the world. Chachma. Bina is the aspect of every Jew that they can understand. They can get into the world. They can work on the world. They can bring the Chachma into the world. Okay. These are the fathers and the mothers of all the Jewish people. Every single Jew has this, right? Because the ultimate purpose of Judaism is that we want to make this world into a dwelling for Hashem. Therefore, our job is not to only stress this aspect of Chachma, to be far from the world. We have to also have the advantage of Bina, the mothers. <clears throat> In some ways, the mothers are even higher. Like it says by Abraham, that he it said, God said to Abraham, everything Sora says, listen to her voice. Remember, Sora wanted to evict Yishmael from the house, and Avram didn't want to do it. And God said, everything that Sora says, you should listen to her voice. Therefore, we have to serve Hashem in both of these ways. It's called the upper unity and the lower unity. And that's where we are right now. If you want to bring it up, you can. We're in chapter, paragraph three, in the last half of paragraph three. So maybe I'll just read it to you in English. A Jew has to serve God both from the fathers, namely Chachma, separate from the world, and the mothers, namely Bina, to be involved with the world, to understand, 
to bring this feeling of godliness that he has into understanding into the world. This is an obligation for every Jew. And that's what Bilaam saw. Mirosh to Bilaam saw this, that even when the Jewish people were in exile, the Jewish people will never be lost among the non-Jews because they have the fathers and the mothers. The fathers connect them to, to God, that gives them the power, and the mothers, that's Bina, that gives them the ability to use this power in the world. What is the world? By means of being in the world, even by means of being in Gullus, the Jewish people, it will arouse the power of defiance and the essence of the soul in every Jew. Like it says in the Targum, Atidim Yachson Alma, Yachsonun Alma. The future redemption by means of the coming of the Mashiach will be through the fathers and the mothers, which will improve the whole entire world. Every Jewish house, not, okay, now we talk about every Jewish person. What about a household? In Judaism, the family is really the core of everything, a family. That's the main thing when people get married. When people get married, they're not getting married in order to get married and have a partner. They're getting married to make a family. The family is the essence of Judaism. When the Jewish people on, on Pesach, they went out of Egypt, they went out with their, their families. Right? Ishu Beitou Ba'u. They went out with families. families. Every family is also, like what do you want to call it, a macrocosm of every Jew and a microcosm of the whole universe. <clears throat> Just like in every single Jew, there's what we call Chachma and Bina. Chachma means being attached to spiritual things, the spiritual values. And Bina means to bring these values into the world. So it says, even though that's the man of the family and the woman of the family, even though that Bina receives from Chachma, nevertheless, Bina is what really conducts the world. That which it receives from Chachma, the father, who is he's supposed to be the spiritual element, the inspiration in the house, the woman has to bring this into really bringing it into the world. The house is really the house because of the, the wife. That's why the woman is called Akira Tabayat. She's the foundation of the house. It's true, a woman has to listen to, the, to, to, the, to what her husband says. If, if her husband, of course, is a proper Jew. A woman has to do the will of her husband, but this totally depends on, in her, in the woman, depends the education of the children, bringing in guests, giving charity, etc. The day-to-day -day things. The majority of the day, the husband is not in the house. The woman, she's the one that deals with the children. That's what it says that a good wife does her husband's will. The word ase can mean do, but it can also mean make. A good wife makes her husband will. She encourages him to be more spiritual. Sometimes a good war wife has to encourage her husband, inspire him. <clears throat> to be more spiritual in a pleasant way, in a peaceful way, that he should be more and more attached to the creator of the universe. And that's what gives the, so you say, the, the, the spiritual energy for the house. When a woman and a man, it says that they, a, a wife and a husband, they get married and if there is, peace between them, then the Shekhinah is there. It makes God's presence. A woman sometimes has to overlook her personal desires and do what Hashem wants. The man has to overlook his personal and do what Hashem wants. By means of that, the house will be conducted in a way that Hashem will say, Shekhanti betocham, I dwell among you. Since the Shekhinah is there, there won't be any bad. 
only good and a good that's revealed. And this is what Bilam saw, that the Jewish people are based on Chachma and Bina, the fathers and the mothers, being connected to God and bringing God into the world. And through this, Bilam realized he could not possibly curse them. All of his curses transformed to blessings. Very good. Okay, story. Story. I'll tell you a story.